Right, hello everybody, this is Zeus Daz from the Unemulated Retro Game Channel and this is a video to show how to record your old retro games onto a DVD recorder in full colour. Now I've been meaning to do this, as I said, this video for quite a bit of time now, but it's come up even more so lately and I've got a few examples out. Here we got my uh, 128k plus one toast rack, the Rolls Royce of the Spectrum range, absolutely mint condition. And they're going for quite a few quid now. We have the original PlayStation 1 on a slight tilt because the laser's wearing out and uh, the game's st uh, stick, <laughs> so I have to I've put some on it, but under it. And uh, while it's doing that, it plays quite well. And as you can see, we have a fully color game, fully color game. Einhander on the PlayStation. Now this is the first example I'm going to um, give to you. The query is some of you are getting either a black and white picture or you're getting literally ghost picture fuzziness but when plugged into your normal television the picture comes out fine. Right now I need to explain something here. This goes a little bit more depth than uh, you, you really need to know a little bit more about this because it all can depend on your DVD recorder. Now my DVD recorders, I've got five. And we just zoom in slowly on that. That's my, my, my uh, DVD recorder there. We've got two. That's a, that's a, um, a RDR HXD 710, the top one. And the bottom one, that one there, is a 910. The only difference is it's got a bigger hard drive inside it. So these DVD recorders have got um, there's three there. They're all 710s. 160 gigabyte. Now originally those were 500 pound each in a day and that big boy there was 650 pound. But um, as time went on I managed to acquire three extra ones. Years later, literally uh, that one there, the 910 was said was 650 pound brand new. I got that for 90. It was brand new old stock. That was extremely lucky fine. And that top one there is a 710 and I picked that up for about 70 old stock brand new. So I've been very lucky there. Now these are the machines that I use to record my uh, retro games on. And being an emulator, an emulator retro game channel, uh, I thought this is the best way to show you how I do it. Now, as I said, some of you are having problems with this, and it's come up recently in a few forums. And uh, the guy that does my uh, repairs on my machines, I've even got the Amiga out as well. So I want to give you as many examples as I can. Another that is 29 years old and immaculate condition too. And the beauty of it is, it's not yellowed at all. See, that's keeping out a UV light you see and not being a smoker. That's a big plus. So excellent, excellent. Every all my machines are well looked after. So now what we're going to do is the reason I'm starting off with this is because this game was not released um, in the PAL world. Unfortunately, it was just NTSC. Now. If you know a little bit about NTSC Stroke PAL, the NTSC color system is terrible. It, it really is compared to PAL. Uh, it's had some cruel nicknames taken from it, aka never the same color twice. You know, and, and, and it's true. Usually the reds show that. It's, it's going to flicker now because I'm using the camcorder on the TV. So I'm using a, a Panasonic 28 inch widescreen CRT telly and I love this I've had this for 14 years and it's still running beautifully and if it got knackered I'd, rep I'd get it repaired no doubt about that can't beat CRT tubes for retro games fantastic um, so you know I, I've I thought here's the time to do it people are having problems recording their stuff and as I said NTSC it's not a very good system at all um, whereas PAL, also known as Perfection at Last, the reason that was about is because back in the day over here, uh, we foresaw that the television people put a sort of device inside which counterbalanced the, uh, the the picture. It's like an arrow going left and right. Whereas the NTSC, they never they never upgraded. So which is why suddenly colors ain't quite matching the picture for a split second it's just not good not a good system at all but now in the age of digital television all that's sort of being phased out but I'm going to give you an example now my television has two SCART sockets now most good televisions will have good uh, two SCART sockets now let me just uh, also say that this video is mainly is going to be for PAL 
uh, players. So NTSC players, you know, America, North America, Japan, all that lot. You can uh, watch the video and enjoy, but obviously I can't really say much about that, how to record, because you have different inputs and different, you know, different systems over where you live. But this is PAL, apart from France, which is CCAM, if I remember right. But most of Europe, a lot of Africa, New Zealand, Australia, Canada, um, there's other, plenty of other countries that use the PAL system. Hong Kong, you know, as part of China anyway. That's where I bought this camcorder from on my world trip. So we're... Um, I can't really, um, I can't really uh, go into it too much with that. But this is for PAL. This is for PAL, the old SCAR socket system PAL. Now, as you can see, this is on AV1. I'm going to whack the system, the actual uh, volume on. Now, I do apologise if I'm a bit jolty because I can't. I'm having to look round for certain things. So we put the volume on. There we go. We've got the volume on now. As you can see and hear. I do apologize. There you go. Plays beautifully. Ignore the flicker. I can't see that on my on my television. It's just a camcorder. And if you can hear its whizzy sound, it's the fan. I'm sorry. It's got to be on. It's really hot today. So you can see Einhander is running beautifully. Or go on a tilted PS1. That is a modified PS1, by the way, so it can play in port games. Now, AV1. Now, if I actually, I shall sit that here a moment. And what I'm going to do, let's just sit that there. Let's see if we get it on a little bit more of a tilt for you so you can see the screen. Hang on. Uh, let's try that. Let's put that there. Now, hopefully, right. Now, as you can see, that is a colour screen. That is, that is an AV1. So, what I'm going to do. Now what should happen is, I will swap that lead over. So let's take that out. And I should put it in AV2. And what you'll find is, if I switch it to AV2, well, not at this moment, because that's typical. There's text going up and down the screen, but you'll you'll soon realise it's black and white, and it is. There it is. It's in black and white. Now, many of you are getting that problem when you're inputting your retro machines. So, all your machines should you should realistically use a SCART lead. Now, I get all my SCART leads from Retro Computer Shacks. Um, I'll put a link in the description's video so you can uh, order some of these SCART leads, and they're brilliant. I've had a few of them dedicated to me free of charge for my channel, so I always plug uh, that shop whenever I can. So that, that, that gives you an idea of NTSC games anyway. Um, if you want to play that on your on the PlayStation or whatever it is device you're using, you have to have a television, AV1. AV1 accepts RGB signals and video, whereas AV2 you'll find doesn't accept an RGB input signal. Hence, you'll either get a black and white screen or you won't get a picture at all. One of the two. So as you can see again, Everything's black and white. Awful. You can't do that anyway. So that's just one example. And I'm going to mute that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in. We we'll take the we we'll take the PlayStation out for a moment. We don't need that now. We're going to get onto the machines that mostly you want to record, which is the Spectrum, the Amstrad. We'll get this scartly out. There we go. So we we'll put all this back now. If I plug that, what we should get is, there we go. That is Dynamite Dan in full colour. Let me just take that away so you can get a better shot. Sorry about the joking this there, but that is Dynamite Dan in full colour. Obviously it's going through a camcorder, so you'll get that weird screen effect. But uh, there we go, we just... It is in full perfect colour. That is going through AV1. Now, of my television. This is the interesting part. 
I am now going to put that on. Let's just put that there. It's a bit of a tilt. Sorry, sorry if I jog. You've got to bear with me because I haven't got three, three hands. There we go. It's on a bit of a tilt. That's fine. Right, now I'm going to plug the Spectrum, and this works the same way for the Amstrad. I'm going to plug this into AV2, and you'll see the difference. AV2. Now, bear in mind, the SCART lead coming out of the Spectrum is kicking out an RGB signal. So if your telly doesn't accept an RGB signal through its SCART socket, you won't get a colour picture. So we're going to put that into AV2. And now what you'll get, you'll either get a black and white picture or you'll get a black screen with ghost. Where are we going? Hang on. Sorry, let me just, just bear with me. I've got that in the wrong, I've got that in the wrong socket, haven't I? What am I doing? Come on, Aaron. Get with it. <laughs> bear with me. Bear with me. That's the one I wanted. Too many scart leads, you see. I'm getting all muddled up. Right, now, there we go. Now, you might not see that, but there are, you can hear it. I've got ghosts. It's a black screen, but in the background, I can see everything. It's all weird characters in the background. You don't get a signal. That's because the AV2 socket on my television does not accept um, an RGB signal. Now this is a problem you lot are having when you're trying to record your games on a DVD recorder. This is the bit that you are going to be interested in. This is the bit we're going to talk about now. So, let's just put that back in there. Let's get all these leads back where they should be. So just bear with me. That belongs in there. And that belongs in there. Right. Now. Okay. And that is a... No, we don't need that. So. Right. Now I've got to put the spectrum back in. Which goes in here. Now you should get a picture. With a bit of luck. And there we go. Perfect. Now. The problem is, I would 99% say the problem is that the reason you're not getting colour when recording onto DVD is because your DVD recorder does not accept RGB signals. Now, if I go into my system menu on my actual recorder, setup, I don't know how well you can see this, video. Now, I'm going to try and it's very difficult because of the uh, the camcorder is trying to record. It's obviously the scan rate is interfering. There's a SCART setting there. Now, I have mine. I have about four inputs on my DVD recorder, and I have got video RGB. As you can see, let's try and get that in a little bit there. RGB. SCART three accepts RGB. Now, if your video recorder, DVD recorder, what have you, only accepts a video signal, it will not record your games in colour. Now, a lot of cheap DVD recorders don't offer RGB input. That's the problem. And that's why you're either getting no picture at all or it's black and white. That's the problem. And it's the same with, let's just bring out the old Amstrad 6 1, the big, the big boy. Mind you, they're all bloody. I don't know what it is about them. I wanted to make computers bigger than the width of your door, but there we go. Right. It's the same, I've got a 6128 here, brand new old stock, fully working, and it's the same with this. The SCART lead comes out, where are we? Uh, there we go. So you can imagine SCART lead coming out of there, very similar to how my Spectrum is. It's going through there, the sound's coming out the mix socket, and it's going in. It's exactly the same way, but and it's kicking out an RGB signal, but unfortunately for you, your DVD recorder is not accepting an RGB input, only video, which means it will only come out black and white. That's the main problem. Now, 
if you want a DVD recorder that does that perfectly, then obviously I can tell you my model is a Sony HXD, or should I say Sony RDR HXD 710, or a 910 if you want the bigger hard drive. That records every retro machine that I've got perfectly. And that also includes, let's just plug this in, if we undo this flap, we've got two scuts at the back, plus a, a composite input at the back, and we've got a composite video at the front here. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to place this down, because otherwise, um, you'll start getting dizzy with all of the uh, movements. So what I'm going to do, I've also got the Amiga tuned in. So let's put that in. Now my Amiga, I record with composite. So we're just changing input. Right, uh, is that right? Let's have a look. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, let's get the menu. Input. Now I should get an Amiga picture. And we do. There you go. There's your Amiga picture. With perfect sound. Perfect sound and perfect picture, perfectly colour. Going through my composite input. That's how I record my games. And it's just a normal Amiga 500. That's all it is. External drives under there. That's it, it's coming out. The picture's coming out of the uh, modulator via the video. Sound coming out. Um, through the back there and it's all three leads are meeting at the front there to give you that perfect that perfect picture so that's what it is majority of the problem is your DVD recorder is not accepting an RGB input now the only thing that this video this DVD recorder doesn't do which um, was a little bit annoying is it doesn't record NTSC or PAL 60 signals now most DVD recorders over here anyway don't record NTSC why would they why would we need to record an a, a inferior color system but the problem is as you know especially PS1 games a lot of games only got released in Japan and North America so they run on PAL 60 stroke NTSC but there is a model two generations younger than mine which I don't have with me but luckily for me my dad has one and he lends it me I can record NTSC games and PAL 60 games such as Einhander and that model take a note is RDR HXD 870 it's two generations younger than mine my one's a bit more uglier these are quite pretty machines um, but it records three color systems PAL NTSC and PAL 60 it covers all grounds if you go on eBay you can pick them up anywhere between 50 and 120 quid you buy one of them it covers everything and the most important thing is it accepts RGB. That's the main thing. You'll never get a color picture plugging it into AV2, the back of your telly, because most AV2 sockets will does not have an RGB input uh, signal. It doesn't accept it. It comes out black and white or no picture at all. Your AV1 does, but most video record DVD recorders, um, the lower range definitely won't have a video input. Um, sorry, Sky input that accepts RGB signals, whereas whereas mine does. So once I've done that, once I've recorded what I wanted to do on the hard drive, I can then edit all loading times up, all mistakes, that kind of thing. And then once you're happy with it, it you burn it to DVD. And again, another thing is, is that the, these, this particular model and the, the other one, the 870 I told you about, also records on double layer, dual layer discs. So giving you almost twice the amount of uh, stuff you want to put on the disc without lowering the quality. And just while I'm on the subject, some of you wanted to know how on earth do I um, load in my Spectrum games in if I don't use tapes anymore. Well, same thing here. Let's just get that out of the way. Right. You've got... Let me just move this out of the way. Sorry. I'm having to look both ways. So what you'll see here, this lead is normally a lead that comes from your tape deck. You can load into your into your, uh, your computer but this lead comes from my hi-fi and from my hi-fi where I can actually 
beef up the volume and everything else. That's what I do in my commentaries. Now, you can, what I do is I load up the game via WinTZX. So I select a game, for instance. Let's, let's, let's select a game, go to downloads, go to ROMs, go to Spectrum games. And, and there we have all these games. I choose a game, I don't know, um, Barbarian 2, 128, open, and it's ready. You press play, tick again, and that sound, the spectrum sound, loading sound, which you'll hear now, I can just do that, and I'll certainly stop it quickly. There you go, awful. Right, let's stop that. That's how I load games into my Spectrum. And you have to put it through an amplifier because I found that if you put a jack, the sound coming from there straight into the 128K, the sound, it doesn't pick it up. It's not bassy enough. It needs, a, it needs more beef to the signal. That's where the amplifier comes into it. So the sound is diverted from here, my laptop, into the amplifier. Then I can put the bass way up, the treble way down. It then comes out the jack the earphone socket of the amplifier and then straight into the spectrum and there you go you have 100% uh, non-failing loading games on the spectrum very similar to the Amstrad but um, I, I don't really use that very much I only use it for uh, certain challenge videos and uh, any long plays I've already done on them so I very rarely get that machine out now so that's it that really is the problem you need to have a DVD recorder where you can go into the menu, here we go again, let's just try and bring that up. DVD menu, in setup, and there should be a video, SCART setting, and just make sure it accepts RGB. If it accepts just video, the picture will come out black and white and it won't work. That's where you're going wrong, most of you. If it's coming through your television, colour for AV1, that's fine. It's the DVD recorder. It's nothing to do with your SCART lead. Now, for LCD and LED screens, the SCART lead always constantly gets updated. I mean, my, my Spectrum one is absolutely perfect now. I had one that produced quite an annoying buzz, but thankfully, because of upgrades, obviously they've done some diodes inside the SCART to change them, and it's produced a much better sound. One of my old, two of my old videos, Robocop and Dragon Ninja, I think, on the Spectrum, produced terrible um, buzzing noises, mainly because of the, the white monochrome. It didn't like that at all. But this is, it's literally cleared all that up now, so that, that's good. And they update the SCARTs quite often to keep up with the new televisions. But that's it, really. It's nothing to do with your SCART lead. I can't really speak about LCD and, and, and uh, LED screens, because I haven't been using them much, but most of us, I've got, an L, I've got a CRT television to uh, play our retro games with. Now there's one other thing somebody asked me to, color, uh, to cover and that was my uh, MAME. Let's turn the Amiga off a moment. We don't need that on now. We made the point there. Okay, we can turn my PlayStation off now. Um, now I'll, t I'll quickly show you what happens when you, while I'm here, what happens when, let me put this camera down again, if you try and record a um, a NTSC signal with a normal DVD recorder that doesn't accept PAL 60 or NTSC. This is what happens. You won't get anywhere. We'll just take that out. Right, I'll put this, I'll put this lead in here. And what you'll get let's see, now hopefully Bear with me. There we go. Now, I don't know if you can see that. Well, you can see that. You can see it's flickering like crazy. And that's through the AV1 input 3 on my DVD recorder. That accepts RGB. So it's accepting the colour. But the problem is, it can't record 60 frames per second. 60 hertz, forget it. It's a 50 hertz like most machines. And why, why would it? We live in a power land, we run at 50 hertz. So, to get past that, you need the, the newer model, the, 8.7, the 870. 
H, uh, HX, no, RDR HXD 870. That will record a perfect NTSC or PAL 60 signal, and you won't get any of that, and you'll get it in full color. So it basically comes down to the how much you're willing to pay. You go for a low end DVD player, and you're gonna, you're most likely gonna have more problems than none. Now, somebody asked me as well, how do I record my main games? Well, that's very simple. I shall show you right now. Right. Now, first of all, I need to plug the composite leads in. Which are those? Typical left, typical right, and your sound. Left, right, and picture. Right, okay. Now, that is now being plugged into my DVD recorder. Now, this end, we have got a wonderful little device, a HD MI to AV. This is the 720 version. I've got the 1080, but you need the 7 you need the 720 because the 1080 will give you huge borders on the left and right because it's trying to simulate the PC screen. So to get a fully recorded arcade game, let's have a look here. Let's just take this out. Now you can see my desktop. All icons right on the far left some icons on the far right and a nice picture of Saturn there now I'm going to put this in like so now the screen's gone blank and there it is but as you can see the icons have all changed and the planet is huge that's because the screen is really stretched now the 1080 version will display exactly the same as you had on my laptop on my television but the problem is the games let's just get one running let's get my emulator running we just load up a simple game this is how I do my main recordings right there we go we've got the um, we've got the system going so I don't know let's put uh, I'm just trying to think of a game off the top Double Dragon 2 Double Dragon 2 The Revenge okay there we go right now if I put that for a 1080 box, that little device, there we go, it's full screen. Full screen. And if you want to play it in the old 4 3 way, well, you just change that on your television so you can aspect uh, 4 3. And hopefully, we should get a bit of game footage coming up here. There we go. But I always like to have it like that. Now, the trouble is with the 1080 it automatically does that it gives you big borders and that's on 69 setting on mine if I if I change it to 4.3 it would be even thinner than that but that's what you need that's a great little device and you pick that up anywhere between 6 and 10 pound and you can flick it between NTSC and PAL as well simple that's how I record so it goes onto my hard drive I then edit them see if I can bring up an old any old game I've got tons of stuff alright Rastan uh, let's have a look uh, alright let's, let's boot Tempest ok now let's just forward it so we get a bit of action going there we go and you can see that's playing the colours are beautiful they're vibrant and that's how I record it Simple as that. I edit the loading times of any particular games or if there's any errors I've done and then dub them to disk and there we go. And then we load them up onto YouTube. Simple as that. Convert them into a file that YouTube understands and that's that. But that's basically the end of that. I just wanted to show you that it is very simple to record old retro games. It's no different than recording a TV channel. I mean, back in the day, in the late 80s, I used to do that on video cassettes, but I, I used the uh, RF output, which was obviously very weak at the time. We didn't have SCARTs back then. 
But I did that, we all did that, to show our mates at school, see, I did complete that level, I did get to that stage and all that kind of stuff, you know, just to show each other we can do it and we weren't making up stuff without any cheats. But there's no reason that you can't put a SCART socket into one of your old machines and record. It's all down to your DVD recorder. It needs to accept RGB input colour. If it doesn't, if it accepts only video, you're not going to get a colour picture. That's that. So my tip is do some revision as far as the machines. Don't cheap out. In other words, pick up something for 20 quid. You need to spend. Now, even these machines, which cost anything between 500 and 650 pounds each, I said I was getting three, I got three of them for up between 50 and 90 pounds old new stock or new old stock whatever you want to call it so you've got to just go to eBay and charge your luck but that's the models you want I've got a 710 uh, RDR HXD 710 and a 910 but if you want to record NTSC and PAL 60 games that's usually foreign PS1 games then you'll need the RDR HXD 870 that will cover all grounds that's what you need and then you're guaranteed to get recordings like mine and I hope that video helps. I hope it wasn't too long drawn out. But that's mostly for all of us in PAL land. Alright, that's all I can suggest. So buy one of those models and you won't look back. Until then, Zeus out.